I'm Lee Brown. This is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. And today is a really long episode because full disclosure, I brought on a really good friend who happens to be an amazing real estate pro in Southern California. She also happens to do coaching and instructing. She's full of social media advice. So if you are a real estate agent or broker, this is going to be your jam. And if you're not, there's still going to be some really good information for you here. So buckle up and enjoy the conversation with Barb Betts. And I'll see you on the other side. So the, you know, I'm sure you've listened to the podcast or at least- uh, Of course I have. We just talk about random shit. We just talk about whatever we talk about and then they turn into episodes. And sometimes it's got a story and sometimes I have to get people off the show because- they won't stop talking about the wrong things. And I had to correct a couple of people, which I don't think I have to correct you for code no, of ethics. You and do we, not. Did, we had to pull down an episode here last week because I got sold a bill of goods by the guest. And then the people in her community rose up to fight about her. And it's things I didn't know. And I'm like, you wouldn't know unless you were local. So we had to pull that down. I'm going to have it. We actually, when this airs, it's right after the apology that I recorded to tell people I don't know everything. So thank you for reaching out. But it's also a really great reminder for realtors who forget that their actions do have consequences. But we see this in volunteering, right? So we see people at national meetings, but we don't know how to behave in their home markets. And we've Agreed. seen some people that are national leaders. And when you go to their local association, it's, it's, it's a not really pleasant interaction. And so I've always thought about that really carefully. I'm like, my reputation has to be the same across all levels. And if somebody disagrees with me, I'm fine with them disagreeing with me, but I don't want to be known as a liar or a cheat or an unethical so-and-so because I really do think people forget how fast their message can travel and that people are watching even when they think nobody's watching. And in fact, the other example I would give you, I was at church yesterday talking to a couple who are living in the same neighborhood my preacher lives in. And we were chatting and I said, well, you know, who was your realtor? Cause I'm always curious. And they yeah. named a local guy that is Roger Holloway. He's fantastic. He's a great agent. And I was like, oh, yay, you had a good realtor. And then they were telling me how he had featured them on YouTube. And when he featured them on YouTube, what they were surprised by, cause they bought new construction is that the other people in the neighborhood who had already bought their houses and moved in, were still watching YouTube, looking for videos about their community by their builder. So they knew this couple before the couple closed on their house. So they're riding around in the neighborhood and the neighbor said, we saw you on YouTube. And the lady was like, that was weird. And I was like, that's a really interesting thing to think about because as realtors, especially those of us that are super active on social media, how often do we assume that our clients, when they finish real estate, stop staring at real estate? Exactly. And they never stop staring at it because no, they don't as addicted as we are, but especially the community they live in. So anyway, we should probably tell the audience who you are. So I appreciate you coming on the show. You better tell people who you are. And if they're not following you yet, they will be right away. And you can watch all your follows, but tell them where you're located, how long you've been in real estate. Tell them my favorite joke about you and your husband. You can tell them all the pieces. I, I will tell them all the pieces. So uh, for those of you that I don't know, my name is Barb Betts. Um, actually, formally, I should joke, Barbara Betts. Um, it's actually a true story that as I started kind of speaking and training a little bit more, um, I we started a little show at my local association called Live with Barb and Ray as a play on Live with Kelly and Ryan. And we would update our members and do this little live show. And we it was a huge hit with our members. And then as I started going around LA and Orange County area in my market, people started calling me Barb because they were so used to the show. And then oh. as I started speaking in training, Barb Betts looked better on a logo than Barbara Betts and BB. And it's a lot of hard things to say. And so I've actually found that I've kind of dropped the aura uh, off and uh, true story, Phil Hawkins, my CEO of Pacific West, best CEO in the state of California, in my opinion, he actually refuses to call me Barb. And shows me every time in his phone how I'm still Barbara Butts, like the old, the OG. So anyways, 
I am in the Long Beach, California area, which I always say is cemented exactly halfway between LAX and Disneyland. So that gives you a little bit of a geographic representation of where I am. I have been in real estate for 20 years. I have been a real estate broker um, for the last seven years, owned my own company for six of those seven years with my amazing husband and business partner, Harold, who you mentioned. And Lee is laughing. If you're listening, you can't hear her laughing, but she's <laughs> her. She loves it because when Lee and I first met, we were at a dinner. Lee was speaking for our Women's Council Network chapter the next day, and we were taking the speaker out to dinner, and I was so excited to meet Lee Brown. I was like major fangirling. I felt like I was meeting Mickey Mouse. Um, not that you're a character, but you are a character. So anyway, anyhow, we're at dinner, and, and somehow my husband's name gets brought up. And Lee looks at me and goes, what's your husband's name? And I said, Harold. And she goes, you guys are like the senior citizen couple. You're like the old couple. And I kind of looked at her and I said, well, you know, a Harold couldn't marry an Ashley. I mean, it just wouldn't sound right. Never so. work. That would be trophy wife territory. Yep. Trophy yep. Trophy so, wife. We'll just give him credit. He did choose well. He did choose very well. Yeah. So anyways, work with my husband, business partner, um, and then also have a true passion for organized and volunteer real estate at the local state and national level. And then more importantly, not more importantly, but also in, 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 um, connection to who I was as a little girl. Um, I love speaking and training and, and educating and helping the real estate industry be better. So that's me. All right. So wait a minute. I don't know this connection to you as a little girl. Did you have a little classroom in your, oh, house? Lee. oh you have no childhood? idea. You have no idea. I was the girl where going to the teacher supply store was cooler than going to the toy store. And my mom was, she actually educated paramedics and taught paramedic school. And I used to go to her paramedic school on the off weeks and I would go play in her giant college classroom and put out my own scantrons and put out my own tests. And I had a seating chart girl. I had the cutest grade book ever. I made up names. I had, I had it all. So when they say you are most designed to do whatever you wanted to do when you were a child, that is actually true. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Is that real? Cause I've never heard that. And people yeah. are always uh, poking at me for what I said I was going to be when I was a little girl. What were you going <laughs> to, oh, Lord, I don't think I want to know this. President of the United States. I started well, in the fourth grade. <laughs> okay. But does that, okay. Let's talk about this for a second, but does that shock you now with your passion for advocacy and your I passion for what's going on in America and, and how it affects. Well, perhaps, except that I saw what happened to President Obama's hair from the time he was a senator until he <laughs> finished his two terms. He went from normal colored hair to a head full of white and gray. And so when I saw what happened to him, and he was not an old president, he was normal age. <laughs> and I was like, oh, lol, I don't know how much I have to pay my hairdresser if I go down that road. So and maybe secretary of state would be where I belong. Well, but <laughs> I think it adds up. What you wanted to do as a little girl is still in your heart today. That's so interesting. All right. So do you follow? I know you love Instagram. And of course, we'll, we'll talk about your love for social media and what it does for you. But there is an account on a comedian out of Charlotte, Christopher Ryan Stamey. Have you found him yet? No, I have not. He's so funny, but I wonder if it translates to the West Coast because he's right here in Charlotte and he's a freaking hilarious, but he pokes at church ladies and the old church stuff. And he did a reel not too long ago where he talked about those of us that used to stalk the Sunday school supply closet where all the craft stuff was, <laughs> like little felt people for the boards and the glitter and the glue and the stamper markers that had a stamp on the end. And I sent it to my fellow former Sunday school teacher people. I'm like, this is us. It was really connected. And so you might connect to him on a. I probably a would. Level. It would be I interesting. I probably would. I probably so would. Out. All right. So I mentioned briefly social media. You are one of the absolute stars on Instagram in the real estate space. I'm curious as to how you landed there. Was it because. It was a sister to Facebook or you came there instead of Facebook. And how did you build an audience there and and talk to us a little bit about what it's done for you? Because, as you know, a lot of realtors and regular people are very allergic to social media, even if they enjoy it. They're panicked about the best way to use it. And so they wind up in this 
lurking mode, which is fine. We all lurk sometimes, but talk to us a little bit about going beyond lurking. So how did I end up on Instagram? That's actually a great question. And it's because I got tired of Facebook and Facebook being, if we can um, use the definition keyboard warriors, right? And it just became everyone's opinions. And I like opinions, but I like opinions in a very um, respectful manner. And I just was tired of just all the negativity and ugliness going on on Facebook. The Facebook groups just got too much. And I thought, I just want to go see pretty pictures of people's kids and vacations. And Instagram, as you know, started out as a photo sharing platform. It was not a place to have conversations at first. It was a place to put a picture of your lunch or a picture of your dog or a picture of your kids or, you know, the ocean. And I think right about when Instagram started really pushing stories is where I saw an opportunity. Because one of the things that I struggle with in my business is selling real estate for 20 years and doing it by relationship. I struggle talking to my database all the time, right? Like you can only call so many people in a day. You can only start so many conversations. We're human. And so what I realized was by using stories, I could broadcast to my database every day. I could start a conversation by simply talking about something I was going to do for the day or a place I went to lunch or a bottle of wine that I drank, or frankly, my best performing story ever that started the most conversations to this day was during COVID in the early days. And we were not supposed to leave our home. Like you felt like you were a literal criminal. If you left your home in California, in California. I know, I know it was, yeah, I know it wasn't like that everywhere, but friends, it was like that in California. I remember my husband would go show houses secretly and I would make sure he had the story of where he was going in case he got pulled over. Like you're going to your mom's, okay, you're going to Yorba Linda, which means you're going to your mom's in Corona to pick up a pharmacy, a a prescription, even though his mother lives in Arizona. But anyways, um, I guess it's on the way to Arizona too. But my best performing story was I, my very best client is a nurse and she had to get to the hospital and her husband was not home yet. He was on his way home. They have three little kids. And she called me and she's like, can you please come over and just watch the kids for like 20 minutes? I've got to get to the hospital. So what did I do? Well, first of all, one of them is my godchild. So of course I went over there to help her. As I was going over there, was getting in my car and I was walking down the driveway and I tripped on a crack in my driveway and I fell face first onto my driveway, like busted my face open, came back in the house, got a bag of peas to put on my face and cried my eyes out driving to my client's house. By the time I got to her house, my face is busted up, my eyes black and blue. I get there. She opens the door. Of course, she's a nurse. So she checks me out, deems that I'm fine, goes to the hospital. And I sat my goddaughter on my lap and we did a story about it. And I, I, now they're a Filipino family. So I'm a Ninong. So if you're a Filipino, you understand it's a big deal. And she got on the stories with me and talked about how Ninong hurt herself coming over to watch them. And I made a joke that COVID got me like, I'm not sick, but this is my punishment for leaving the house. And I'll tell you, Lee, I've never had more conversations on one day on social media than that. And here's what I teach realtors. What I teach real estate professionals is the reason you do stories and the reason you show your personal life and the reason you document your day is because you're starting conversations and you're teaching the algorithm that you have a relationship with somebody. And so all of those people that responded to my face planting story, the next day when I talked about maybe a new showing restriction or how we were going to get into property or something, everyone heard it because they all responded to the face planting the night before. Or then when I came home that night and my son had taped out my body on the driveway because it was such a family uh, joke. So anyways, stories work. And that's how I really understood what we really need to be doing on stories every day is broadcasting and sharing and putting out conversation starters so people can talk back to us. All right. So first of all, let's address the fact that you're obviously amazing parents that you came home to your son, making an outline of your body on the driveway. So high five for, you know, my son, you'll, you'll understand that that is his personality. So my, my next question to you has to do with that, that algorithm you mentioned, when you look at how our messages can be controlled by the tech platforms, when they decide what should and shouldn't be seen, what if, 
you have a sizable audience and sizable number of subscribers, or even if you have a hundred, but it's only seen by five, how do you get that message amplified when there's rules that you don't have access to? What's the secret? Great question. And the secret is you have to build the relationship the other way with the client or with the person you want to see the information. So social media is a two-way street. You're putting the information out and yes, you are correct. The algorithm is choosing who to show that information to, but how you can, if you will, train the algorithm. You can't trick it. You can't control it. Don't let anybody tell you if I see one more Lee Facebook post of, if I put this in my feed and the first 10 people that respond, we'll change the algorithm and we'll stop Facebook. You guys stop. Stop. Very tiresome. You, you're, you're, you're not that big. I love just y'all. Stop. Yeah. Just stop. 10 Kim people Kardashian saying can't change the algorithm. And if Kim Kardashian can't do it, that's really like a <laughs> right. <thing. laughs> yeah. <laughs> but here's how you can train the algorithm, just like anything else in life. You train the algorithm by showing Facebook and Instagram that you actually have a relationship with somebody. And that goes both ways. Because if Lee posts something on her social media and I comment and respond, and then that same day or the next day, or even a week later, Lee responds to something I put on social media. We have now told Facebook and Instagram that we have a relationship and Facebook and Instagram will start showing more of us to each other. It is a proven fact. It's why If you um, even have lunch with somebody you haven't seen in a while, if you go to a board meeting and there's people in the room that you haven't seen in a while, realtor friends, check me out on this. You go to your next state meeting and you're seeing people you haven't seen in six months. I guarantee you that night and the next day, you'll start seeing their social media posts. Our phones are talking to each other too. Our phones are creepy. So let me ask you a question. All right. So if I go to my stories, yep. Click on activity and yep. I see the viewers. Yep. Go to each of them now and see if they have it or just look for the circle people. You, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. Or here's what I do. What I do is when I am doing my lead generation, when I'm doing my outgoing connections, which I do do every day, because if you're not contacting your database daily, you need to start yesterday. When I go to make a phone call or even a text message just to check in on somebody. Now, I know Lee Brown does not like the text messages, but they work for me. I'm old. You're young. Although I do, I do call people, but here's what I do first. I go to their social media first and I comment or engage as long as it was something posted recently. Okay. Do not be that creepy person. That goes and comments on something from six months ago. Okay, that's, that's weird. Really bad. But how far back can you go? Like three days? I, I, I think I would be okay. I would say a week, honestly, because I, I see stuff in my feed because don't forget if, if I post something today and then it doesn't get a lot of traction, but for whatever reason, a bunch of people start commenting on day three or four, that post will live organically. I would say for about a week, it's not unusual to go How back many of this in your feed. What'd you say in the stories or in your feed? Both well, in stories, stories, stories are only going to stay 24 hours. In the feed, I'm saying you could see stuff back as far as a week and you could still comment and engage on it. Okay. So this story has a whole bunch of hearts on it. Yep. I want to interact with the hearts. If you want to interact with the hearts, you have to open up the profile and then either respond on their stories or just send them a message back. So what about this creeper that I can't stand? I can't block Block him. I don't know if you're allowed to in real estate. He's in real estate. Well, that would be a great legal question. And I'm not an attorney. I will disclaim that right now. But why can't you block people that you don't want to have a relationship with? That would be saying you have to, that would be saying you have to accept every friend that you have. Because I'm, because I'm in leadership in my state. And so am I I allowed to block him, even though his private messages that he sends me are this long? It may be politically not cool for you to block him, but I don't understand why you legally couldn't block him. I'm a scientist. Y'all don't know who I'm talking about. I ain't calling him. so silly. But yes, the whole point is I don't know another place. The reason I love stories so much is I don't know another place on the internet where you cannot hide that you watch someone's story. Oh, or, TikTok. You can't hide on TikTok because well, I, can't, I can't follow my daughter's boyfriend because then he'll know his girlfriend's exactly. mother is following. Exactly. Her and I'm really just a mom. So I don't understand. But Facebook people. and Instagram you, someone can look at your post and not like it or comment on it. And you have no idea. And someone can look at your feed 
But the second they watch your story, it's going to show up that they watched it. And I'm telling you, if you would pay attention to your stories, if you pay attention, especially when you're talking about real estate, everybody that's watching and watching consistently cares about you, likes you, and would probably give you business if you would just freaking ask them. All right. This is so enlightening. And then I'm also really enlightened. I, I never thought about that, right? I, I'm the I like vanity metrics and I know I'm not supposed to, and I teach not to worry about vanity metrics. And what do I do? Stare at them. Cause I've noticed <laughs> my story counts have gone way down. Cause you're human. I used to get all of these, like, you know, 800 views on a story and now I'm down to 200. Well, that's just Instagram in general. I think I'm being suppressed. I don't trust them, but anyway, so I just need to go look at activity and, and better interact with people that I want to interact with. So exactly. Uh, I would probably go look for my past clients in this list yes. interact with them first. I would yes. prioritize my yes. interaction. Yeah. Or just pull up your database. Who are the next five people you need to call? I'm sure you have a list that you rotate I, through. You know, I have a Rolodex and I spin it and I, it's like playing. No, Lee Brown, Brown, Lee Brown, that do not tell me that. No, Lee Brown, Brown. stop it. No, you have a Rolodex. stop it. Stop it. You do not do that. You do <laughs> not do that. No, you do. But after I talk to him, I make a note in my database. I do. Do not it. listen to Lee Brown. Do not listen to her. You need a systematic way to contact your database. And if you don't have one, you need, yet. you need one yesterday. You can also hire agents who can make all the ridiculous, the regular phone calls. And then I like to play roulette, but it's more fun that way. I need to have fun to prospect. <laughs> <laughs> you are killing me right now. You're killing me. You I do not that. do that. You, if you're, if you're not watching the video friends, you don't know what's happening to Barb right now because she's so horrified by my old lady behavior that her technology brain is literally <laughs> cannot comprehend what you're saying right now. But it also means I used to write offers in triplicate press hard three copies. You remember that? I, I've done that one for the client. One yes. For the yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I actually, I, I think we probably explained them better before we had DocuSign and Speaking of technology and DocuSign, I was cracking up. I was with a buyer client electronically last week. I was writing her offer and I said, I'm going to talk to you on the phone when I send this so we can walk through it before you click anything. So I got her on the phone and we're on document one and I'm explaining it and I'm answering questions. She's like, I already clicked. I'm like, I told you not to click. You have questions. We get to document two and she's like, well, I'm done. I was like, oh, please <laughs> <laughs> reopen the document because we're going through all of this. And she laughed and she said, but I trust you. And I said, I appreciate that. It don't work that way. We're going to have to look at every line here oh because changing states, you have kids coming with you. I want you to be super okay with this purchase. Oh my gosh. But it was well, at least she, I mean, she trusted you there. There's a lot to say there. Oh, she does. But it, it worries me though, in real estate that some people go so far into technology that Agreed. they stop doing the very important work of explaining what somebody is clicking on, because that's a legally binding document. And then you think about social media and that sometimes we forget those interactions matter as much or more as our traditional interactions on the telephone. And so this whole concept goes back to where you started the way you built your business, which is on relationship marketing. And so let's talk a little bit about how you came to that conclusion as that's where your business was thriving and how you've expanded in that space. And especially in a, a changing economic environment, my guess is that relationship marketing is ever more important. So do expound a little bit more here. Well, here's, here's the deal. My, my story is that I was taught to door knock because I live in a community and area where we have 50 by 100 lots. I said, stop. Do you love door knocking? I love door knocking. Will, will you hold, will you hold please? 50 by 100 lots taught to door knock, very short to the porch, knock on the door. Did you know your neighbor down the street is selling? Have you ever thought about buying or selling your home? I got chased by a dog, Lee, by a dog. Yeah, but what a kind little, of dog? You're in California. It was probably tiny a tiny dog. dog. It was about this big. You can't see my hands, but it was a little, I called a whippersnapper, but it was okay. an ankle biter. And it chased me down the street. And thank God there was no ring doorbells in 2003. Thank God there was no cell phone cameras, but the gardener was down the street and he was mowing and blowing a lawn and blew that little sucker back to its house. And I drove back to my manager's office and I said, this is not what I signed up for. I hate this. I just want to help my friends and family. I don't want to do this anymore. And he said, well, why don't you go help your friends and family? And I'm like, huh? And he's like, well, you've lived here your whole life. 
you know, everybody just go talk to your friends and family, ask them for business. I'm like, is that all you have to do? And I started doing it and I started building relationships and I started communicating that I was good at what I did. And I started making sure I was marketing to them and nurturing them and taking care of them. Like humans take care of humans. And before you knew it, people were telling me about their mothers and their brothers and their cousins and their neighbors and their coworkers. And, and that's how I did it. And I, I haven't turned back. I, do, I honestly am not qualified to do real estate any other way. I'm not qualified to market any other way. Well, it's what you know. And also you've never had to purchase a backpack blower and have it promotionally coded with <laughs> your brand to blow a dog down. But, okay. But Can here's right here. Don't anybody tag in the animal activist because <laughs> dog does not farm. No, <laughs> it probably still home. lives there. It was one of those that lives forever. It was on Cane Hill. I still remember the street I was on. Okay. But here, hear me now. One of my pet peeves in real estate is with trainers and educators and coaches. And, and Lee and I do our, obviously our fair share of that. But one thing you will never hear me say is that doesn't work because I firmly believe that everything in real estate eventually works if you do it consistently. It's a matter of how much time, energy, and money does it take you. Door knocking? For the people in the bag. It's just a matter of how much time, energy, and money it takes. Door knocking works. It takes a lot of freaking time and energy. Have you ever gone driving past a house that you sold and saw somebody else's sign in the yard? That's the moment where as a realtor, you totally throw up in your mouth a little bit because you know the reason they use somebody else is probably that you didn't follow up enough. So what are you to do? You're very busy. That's what we have for you here. Check out followupboss.com slash crazy where you'll get a 30 day free trial of the program that top producers use to get themselves more organized. The best part is it plugs into over 250 different programs to give you ideas and timeframes for follow up with people that want to support your business if they could just remember your name. So if you want to avoid that sick feeling in the bottom of your stomach when you lost business that you should have had, go to followupboss.com slash crazy and check it out for a free trial. You'll want to sign up and be like all the top producers in town and frankly, just stop losing business. Your clients need you. They just got to remember you go to followupboss.com slash crazy. May not take a lot of money. Steps in and you get vitamin D. Yep. And if you need to be around people in short bursts, as I do, I'm a short burst person. It's so good. And right? y'all, if you're not watching the video, you're missing out on Barb using the pointy mom finger <laughs> chain. Like, right at the camera, she's like, hey, it's consistency. And I love it. <laughs> okay. Direct mail works. Ton of up. money. Ton right of money. Now. It's expensive. But not Why? if you do it correctly. Why it's do? Expensive. Well, it can be expensive. You're pointing the screen because we got a picture of you pointing because this is hilarious. <laughs> Why do I do relationship marketing? Because it takes the least amount of time, energy, and money. As long as you like people, you have to like people. And then I would add on to that. I, I tell people all the time, you know, some of these big teams and these big production numbers, and you hear these realtors and, and real estate professionals doing hundreds and 300 and 400 and 500 transactions. But I'll tell you right now, I'll put my PL up against theirs any day, meaning the percentage of profit I keep. Well, I do not sell as much. What'd you say? You can do that because you know, I can. absolutely. Conversation yeah. And they, they may not have such a document to rely well, on. Well, if you're a real estate professional, you're a business owner and you need a profit and loss statement. Mm -hmm. finger. <laughs> well, mom finger there, but it's also a great reminder though, for anybody listening to this, who's wondering why we jumped in that or why I jumped on that space, but if you want to do relationship marketing or you want to do targeted sphere mailings or you want to do door knocking, you had better be tracking so that you know where your dollars are actually. I, this is where I do love Kevin on Shark Tank, where he says his dollars are soldiers and he expects them to bring back prisoners, which I think is. Ooh, I've never heard that. We, we love Shark Tank as a family. It's one of the shows that we can watch all together. It doesn't have smut and crap on it. And actually gets the kids thinking. And then we go look and see if the business is still around. And we have a little pool going for that. But he wants his dollars out working and bringing more dollars back. And it does concern me how many realtors will say, 
This thing from Barb Betts is relationship marketing. It sounds good, but I can go spend a thousand dollars a month over here on some leads. And then they're just hoping that there is something in that cold, hard batch that will turn into something yep. and it may, and it may work for your business. But if you're not watching to see what dollars come back off of that outflow, yep. you will wind up out of business or in the sites of the IRS. And I don't, I don't care to be in their conversations at all. People need to know you, like you, and trust you. And people will do business if they know you, like you, and trust you. But please don't ever think that just because someone knows you and likes you means they trust you. You've got to give them a reason to trust you, which is where relationship marketing comes in. You can't just be nice to people. Being yeah. nice to people, you're a nice person. Yeah, that's not the kind of realtor they want. No, you got to prove that you're also good at what you do. And when you get those three together, the know, like, and trust, that's where you can sustain a business through every market we've ever had through relationships. Now, I will fast forward now to the point we are at today. And I have been telling realtors this for the last two years. It's going to take more. Even the, even my own agents and my brokerage, we've had this conversation. In this current market, high interest rate, people just refinance down to 2%. Whatever, whoever you had in your database, whatever you did last year, you got to double down right now. You can't, when, when people say all you've ever done is relationship marketing, that's true. But even I'm having to double down right now. Even I'm having to add more people to my database. I'm having to call on more people. I'm having to build more relationships because just what we did in the last three years is frankly, what I've done my entire career is not going to be enough to sustain us going forward. So you got to do more. Well, and when the market changes, everybody's retooling. And that's one thing that's interesting right now. You and I have both been in for so long. We've seen multiple market conditions, but it's been a long time since we dealt with people in financial distress because Agreed. Of the, the distress was how much do I bid? How much deposit can I come up with? And now I had this conversation with an agent yesterday and I was working really hard to retain some Zen and patience with her. <laughs> She could not understand why anybody would go to foreclosure when they have equity. And after about eight back and forth in the Instagram message, I think we finally got to the same place. She was mistaking financial solvency for equity, and it's not. Somebody may have had all the run up, but lost their job. We're going to see job losses as exactly. the market continues to evolve. And if you can't pay the note, most banks totally want to work it out. They don't want a whole bunch of news. No, campaigns. they don't. But if you ignore them and you're not making the payments, spoiler alert, the bank can still come get it. But this goes into that relationship piece, because sometimes I think we get too lost in the cute and the pretty thinking that builds a relationship. And there are people out there that need to know you're the one they can actually call and say, I don't I don't, I don't know who else to say this to, but do you have any help? They're so afraid to say it out loud. And that's that trust factor, which is the third thing you mentioned. So give us a a tried and true Barbette secret for building trust through online platforms with somebody that you have a surface relationship with and you want it to go deeper. Okay. So, well, there's online and offline, right? And I think that I want to touch on what you just said, because I just had this conversation with an agent an hour before um, I started talking to you today. And we were talking about um, she, you know, she was doing calendars in the neighborhood and she was doing football schedules. And I said, you know what, that's great for name recognition, but you are doing nothing to communicate trust. We need to stop being so mushy. Yes. I want you to build a relationship. Yes. I deliver pizza cutters and I give out all kinds of Valentine's day gifts and wine and candy. And I, you know, take really good care of my people, but I also have to remember, I've got to prove that I'm a professional. And just giving football schedules and calendars does not prove you're a professional. Online, so in, 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 my, in my offline world, I believe I, I mail a monthly postcard every single month to my database and it's something of value. I have this one sitting on my desk right now. It says it's impossible to sell high and buy low. And on the back, it talks about how what everyone wants right now is to sell in the market we were in and buy in this market. And it's impossible unless you're leaving the state and going somewhere else or you're going to wait three years to buy a house. If you're going to move a mile down the road, you're not going to sell high and buy low. Sorry, try again. It doesn't work, right? This is communicating value. Now, online, you got to start storytelling. Online, you got to start doing educational content. Online, it is all about reels right now. If you cannot wrap your head around reels, you need to. Lee, you do an excellent job 
every day with a reel, every single day. And it's not about singing and dancing anymore. Yeah, those are fun. Those are fun. And I do them every once in a while, but that's not what's going to communicate value. You do what I'm doing right now. You hold up your phone in front of your face, say a sentence, hit pause, say a sentence, hit pause, say a sentence, hit pause, stitch them together, add some captions, put a good thoughtful caption that someone can learn three steps to buying a home in this market, three steps to getting pre-approved right now, three steps to understanding that interest rates being at 7% is not the worst thing in the world. Like all the things that we know we're saying on, you know, repeat, make some video content and get it in front of your people and then make it good enough that your database wants to share it. And that's the magic. When they start sharing it with others, that's how you find people that you didn't know before who know that they can trust you because your best client, Heather, just shared your video and they trust Heather. And you make this great point on the heels of me talking about the vanity metrics, which are the number of views and the types of uh, you know, counts you get and comments on your postings. But if you're posting a cute dance and that's your brand, because maybe you were a professional dancer in a past life and this brings people into community with you, that may work. But if you post a cute little TikTok dance, because that's what everybody's doing and you have 30,000 views, that's not what's going to define your brand unless you add it to something else. And everything Barb's talking about here is brand building. So if you had to describe your brand in one sentence to a rando who met you on the street because their friend Heather shared this video and they're like, oh, OMG, I saw you on the internet. And you're like, hey, what's up, friend? How do you describe your brand in one sentence? In real estate? I'm a real estate trusted advisor. I'm a trusted advisor for your real estate needs because I don't just want to be a realtor. I don't just want to be someone who sells homes. I am the person you call, for instance, when Heather and Christian needed to put a roof on their house and they didn't have dollars in their pocket to do it. Who did they call to get advice on? Do we go to the credit union and take out a personal loan? And I said, absolutely not. You have $400,000 equity in your home. You take out a home equity line of credit. Those don't exist right now. Oh, yes, they do. Here's the person and the number to call. You get a home equity line of credit because investing in your home through a HELOC is exactly what you should be using those dollars for. Get the new roof on your house. Do not take out a personal loan at the credit union. Absolutely not. But who did they call on? They They don't need to buy and sell real estate right now. They called their trusted advisor. I am a trusted advisor who specializes in real estate. And I want to be called when you have a problem with your home, when you need a plumber, when you need a painter, when you need to know where to go in the community, when you're confused, when you're financially struggling and you don't know how to use maybe your equity to help you get through a hard time. Because all of that work and answering the phone for all of those questions leads to, hey, Barb, my neighbor needs to sell. Hey, Barb, my mom needs to sell. Hey, Barb, my best friend needs to buy a house. That's how those phone calls happen. Those phone calls don't just happen because of a postcard. They happen because my clients trust us for everything, everything. Well, it's because they connected you to the postcard. Exactly. You started the football things can work great. If you're driving around the neighborhood and you're wearing a Jersey for the local team and carrying a ball, and then you're chitting, chatting with people that connects the dots. They're not bad. It's just, that cannot be the only thing you do. I mean, I give out my cookbooks because of I course have- you should. Here and I always squeeze a little real estate in there and people can connect all of those dots because my brand is connected to the marketing that I'm putting out there. And I think that's something a lot of realtors get lost in because they're so, it's so interesting to me. We're in a space of amazing entrepreneurs who love serving the public. I mean, these are servant leaders every time you see them. And then they're building a business that looks like them. It's got their values and they've got their offering to the public. And then they get into social media and start doing what everybody else does. And I'm like, wait, 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 yeah. where did you go? That's, yeah. where, where, where's the awesome side of you? And said you posted, just listed, best year oh. ever, best month ever. And they've lost that that touch that says they, they do want to be the trusted advisor. I mean, honestly, wouldn't it be nice if every realtor who watched and listened to this went to their trusted resource list, picked your favorite vendor of whatever they help you with, pool, landscape, the people who do concrete work, plumber, electrician, handyman, paint. And you said, hey, let me do a little spotlight on you. And then we talked about the trusted yep. advisors to whom we're connected. That would be some pretty cool content that we could see that would drive that conversation forward and also help the people that are on our trusted list ourselves. 
the the more that you can share the trusted people in your world to the people that trust you, because remember a referral, although I am agnostic to using that word outgoing to our clients, you'll have to follow up with me later, figure out why, but in, in our real estate world, I use it all the time, but a referral, when someone gives you a referral, it is a transfer of trust. You can say recommendation. They give you a recommendation. Okay. They have recommendation. They are transferring their trust in you to someone else. The other person is saying, okay, well, if Lee trusts her, then I'm going to take that trust and trust her myself. It's the biggest trust responsibility you have. And so when your clients trust you for real estate, then they trust you for everything else. You've got to have those people and you've got to highlight them and share them more importantly, so that your clients even know you have them, but it also helps those people, people's businesses and, you know, business to business is a whole nother tangent that we don't have time to talk about today, but there's magic over in there too. The business is everywhere if agents would just open their eyes and stop thinking it's about the freaking house. It is, I mean, I know you have the more than houses and I, I believe it wholeheartedly. You are more than a sign in the yard. You're more than what you're paid. Your value is so much more than what you actually do. Your value is who you are, period. And you are more than a real estate professional. If you're doing the business well, let's just add Well, that. of course, I'm you're talking right. to the people out there who are pros, right? The ones that haven't yet gone into that space, they should know there there's totally room for more great realtors, but you're going to have to think about the holistic side of real estate. And yes, that was the tail of my cat. <laughs> I was like, I just see this thing kept coming up. I'm like, what is she just going to We used to have three cats Aww. now and there's Sonic and she's very needy now that we've lost two cats. So oh, I'm sorry to so hear that. A lot of viewers, they died of old age. Don't be all stressed out. Because <laughs> we talked about dogs and now we've talked about cats. I mean, we're very egalitarian here. We look out for everybody. <laughs> Birds, they're outside. They can't come in, but there is a... There's a rooster behind me on the wall. I'll point out there is a rooster and a farmer's market with a bunch of other animals. I'm working on that. I don't have pigs yet or I don't want sheep. I do want goats though. So if my husband retires, we're getting goats and just don't tell him because he doesn't understand that he's going to love them yet. And he, he <laughs> okay. So back to this brand building, yeah. if you give me your explanation to a member of the buying and selling normal public. What if you run into a realtor super fan who has been watching you on Instagram, they're implementing the ideas, they maybe did your coaching with relationship marketing, and they're like, so you talked about relationship marketing, and they're trying to get their mind around it. Give me one sentence that explains your viewpoint as a trainer, instructor, general advocate for all of real estate. Um, Well, number one, it would be, it's not about what you do. It's not about what you sell. It's about who you are. People want to know who you are, which is why when I made the decision going through my hair loss journey, oh, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to my social media. You'll figure it out in about 25 seconds flat. Going through this journey has taught me more about the power of authenticity and showing up as who we really are than anything else I've ever done in my entire life. And the more I show up authentically online, the more my clients trust me even more. It's funny that they, they'll say to my husband, my husband will go on an appointment and they'll say, wow, I love everything Barb's sharing online. I love how open and transparent and honest she is. It really makes me feel like we know why we can trust you guys. Just because I shared about a hair loss journey. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a hair loss journey to go out there and be authentic. You just need to go out and be you. To our real estate and realtor community, what I would say is when you find and when you understand how much more this industry is than houses, how much more this industry is than even your brand or your brokerage, that this industry is so much more than us. And that what we do at a local state and national level affects communities and it affects lives. And I think that's probably the number one thing that I, and the number one reason I spend so much time on the road doing what you and I both do as advocates is because someone's got to do it. I hate saying that, but it's true. Someone's got to do it, but it really does change lives back at home. What we're doing in DC, what we're doing in your state capitals makes a difference and you can make a difference too. You got to show up, you got to be educated, you got to be aware, you got to be present and you got to understand that this is not a job. This is a career. This is a lifestyle. This is a profession. And more importantly, as we know, per our code of ethics, it's who you are. You don't get to abandon your code of ethics. You don't get to go to the bar and decide you're not wearing your code of ethics hat, right? Like this is, it becomes who you are. So I would leave you with that. 
Well, my favorite part of what you kept saying is we gotta, we gotta, we gotta. It's not you should, you could, you should consider it. It's you have to. Have to. And I think that was something I, I wish, I don't know about you, but I wish I'd learned that earlier in my career. Because at the beginning of my real estate career, that first nine years, all I wanted to do was sell. I had no idea yep. what organized real estate was doing, didn't yep. care. I did that fussing of they don't sell as many houses as I do. So they have time for all that. And then the minute I got pulled in, I said, oh my gosh, that's what we do? That's I know. A, this is crazy. And so I had to jump into super humble mode of, I don't know diddly squat about this and I have to learn because it's going to impact my clients. And in the future, it's going to impact my whole community. And we look at this in relation to what realtors are facing right now with all the legal challenges to yeah. the way their business, which we have great defense because we are completely consumer friendly. Yes. But the number of agents out there that are disconnected from the information because they think somebody else is going to handle it. Y'all. Yep. Nobody else is going to, ha- nobody else can handle your social media. Let's just do that. You can't. Oh God, don't even get me started. Me or Barb on your social media. And, and we're glad we like the shares. I mean, share away, yeah, Put- share away, save it, whatever. But the impact doesn't come from us being on your social feed. It comes from you. And the 100%. same thing with our legal challenges and with whatever's happening with real estate in your local market, we are glad to help, but your power is so great. And many of y'all haven't even tapped into it. And so that's why we talk about the policy work that realtors do all the time under our packets is so much more about policy than anything else. And for the record on the lawsuits, you can always get your updates at competition.realtor. And that's not for your broker or your association exec or your local president. That's for you if you're in real estate. And by the way, if you're not in real estate, let's just say you're a normal consumer who wandered up on the show because you have fallen into the rabbit hole of oddball episodes. Hey, <laughs> you can always go read it too, because the public needs to know. Agreed. Realtors are not what they saw with Annette Benning in American Beauty, because that was a gross image of us. Yep. And the only good episode of Modern Family I saw with Phil Dunphy was that one where he was showing the um, his father-in-law's wife. I can't remember the names of actors and actresses, the, the beautiful one with the hair. And they were, the lady was, outside of her school zone yeah. and had some bad permits and he called her out for it. That was a good episode, but otherwise he was kind of a buffoon and that's not who realtors are. Realtors mm-hmm. are so thoughtful about their clients. All we would implore you is take that care that you give to each buyer and seller and expand it just a wee tiny bit out into all of real estate. Because if you're good at conducting the practice, you're going to be great when you dial into the profession. Absolutely. A thousand. I, thought, I wish someone would, I wish someone would ask me sooner. I mean, I am, a, I'm a perfect example of, I wish someone would have asked me sooner. I wish I would have known sooner. I feel very conflicted that I didn't really get involved in organized real estate until 2000 and really 11, I would say 15 before I got super active. And I've been licensed since 2003. And it's like, come on. And then the last thing I would leave you with in that front is you think people like Lee and I are crazy. Um, and most people do, uh, because we kind of are to, to a point, but, um, you know, there, there is something called make your trip work for you. There's something called relationship building, uh, with other realtors. And, um, that's why I love what we do. Cause we get to go make a difference in our industry. We get to go advocate and we build relationships with other really, really, really cool realtors across the United States to where I need anything in any city and anywhere. I've got a friend to call, whether that's, I need something for myself or I need something for a client. And let's face it, we all know one of the beauties of our industry is to be able to give those referrals across the nation to our colleagues. And I think it's one of the biggest gifts in our industry. And I don't think enough, you know, real estate professionals understand that most industries can't do that. You know, attorneys can't do that. Insurance people can't do that. Financial advisors can't do that, but we can. Oh, But but we can. And and we we should understand that you volunteer the way Lee and I do. You build those relationships and you get that business. And it's really, 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 it's a really cool reward if you will, because we're there to do work, if but you it's, do a real, it's yes, it's a really good added benefit of what we do. So, but it's also how you can find the attorney and the insurance agent and oh, the, absolutely call the realtor and say, Hey, who you got? Because good realtors have that great trust. They know good people. Speaking of which, did you get that listing that I sent you for my guy whose mother-in-law needed to sell her house? Did you mother-in-law have- mother-in-law used a used the friend in the neighborhood, you know, type thing? He oh, tried. Well. 
We tried to help her. We tried. We tried. So hey, it was worth an opportunity because how it was absolutely you. worth an opportunity. Well, you helped this person. And you said yes, that. it was very, very exciting. Which is also a reminder. Sometimes you don't get everything you strive for, but it never makes it less exciting to have an opportunity or an at bat since you're a baseball mom. I, mean, we all I am. Bats. But I got to ask you before we jump off the volunteer track, how did you get roped into volunteering? Who tapped your shoulder and, and what caused them to do that? So my story is actually, I had an ethics case filed against me. I had an ethics case filed against me in 2011, um, a very difficult, frivolous uh, case full of lies, which I will always tell realtors, the reason you need to be so cautious and so careful is because one miscommunication like we had, it was a miscommunication led to, frankly, me having health challenges and lots of other things. But after that was over, after I was exonerated of all charges, um, I took the MLS traffic school class. Um the director of professional standards said, I really liked the way you handled yourself. Will you be a member of our grievance committee? We need people like you. I joined the grievance committee after a couple of years on that. Christine McGowan tapped me on the shoulder and said, will you apply for my board? I, I can't, I don't make the decisions. It's a nominating committee, but will you apply? I'd love to have someone like you. We need fresh new voices. And that was 2015. And I, I hate to say the rest is history, but it, it really is history. And that was, and then I, I was I, I encouraged to do my first, um, contribute a president circle, um, very early on and was told what it meant and why. And, um, my life was forever changed by that event and really understanding our advocacy side of our business. And then, you know, now it's just, it's, it's who I am. I don't, I don't look at it as a chore. I don't look at it as a job. I just look at it as this is what we do. We, we, we change lives. Well, and my favorite part of that story is two favorite parts. The first one is that you had leadership in your local realtor association who was actively seeking to have new people at the table. I think that speaks volumes about the staff and volunteer leadership of the past, that that was their goal was, hey, you seem cool. Let's get you in the room, too. And they didn't know what you were going to bring or not bring to the table, because sometimes we invite people in and they sit there and they turtle shell and don't say anything. And man, do we miss out when they do that. And so you obviously reciprocated by giving. But my my favorite, favorite part of all that, and I didn't know this whole piece of your story, that you took a negative entree and turned it into, I actually belong here. And so many people, if they start off with that negative, we call it the brown envelope, because those of us that have been in a long time, that's how you used to get your complaints was in a brown envelope. And now they yep. come in email. But you would see that your heart would sink because nobody wants to do things wrong. Yep. They would like to do things correctly. And frankly, nobody really wants personal responsibility, but you leaned in and changed my life. Even in a falsehood, you didn't let it color your opinion of the organization. And I love that because too often we don't get things going our way and it's, well, the organization sucks. Well, the organization didn't suck. You had a complaint that you handled in the way yep. it was designed. And if you're a member of the public, you should know that when an ethics complaint happens, it's heard by a panel of peers. So we have an opportunity to defend ourselves because we're innocent until proven guilty in front of our peers. I had this conversation last week. I was teaching the code of ethics and they did not like, the room did not like the case study we looked at. They did not like the outcome. They were opposed. Mm. To it. They were grumpy about it, arms crossed. And that was the wrong decision. And I said, look, if you don't like that decision, you need to be in the grievance panels. and in Exactly. The Room so that your voice could counterbalance somebody else's so that the best decision can come forward. And I Agreed. think this is probably the best example ever of why volunteering matters, because I, I'm not sure that today's person wants to go beyond having a complaint filed as much as they perhaps should lean into it. So you know, it. Uh, what, what I would say is I, at that point, I didn't know what my association did. I didn't know what the code of ethics was. I had no idea what it really meant to be a realtor until I walked into that brown manila, manila, manila envelope on my desk and my husband's and let's um, side story. It was actually him that, that had the miscommunication um, stamped, conf oh, stamped, con stamped confidential all over it. So and the, the rest is history. All right. So in your years of working with actual buyers and sellers, because let's never forget that while you do own your boutique and while you are still on the road traveling and instructing, you are still that trusted advisor. I am. So, and I know you gave us the wholesome, I'm a godmother story. I want to know the crazy one, the one that we will be sitting down at a table and you say, look, 
Y'all are never going to believe what happened. I want to hear that story. Which one is that? Mm. Oh my goodness. Um, my best friend was selling her house. And uh, it was the first time I've ever had to call an attorney to figure out how to do a disclosure. California, we are a heavy disclosure state. We have to disclose everything. I mean, if someone farted in the house, I think we have to disclose it. Um, and uh, she uh, thought she had ghosts in her house, was very convinced she had ghosts in her home and and was adamant that things move in her house. And um, And she had gone to the point of having it blessed. And I'll never forget the day I had to call my attorney and say, how do I disclose this? How do I say the seller thinks there's ghosts in her house? Does she say <laughs> the seller thinks things move in their house? Then we're going to be like, is it the foundation problem? Is it? So the attorney said to me, no, you're going to put down on the disclosures that the, ha- the home has been blessed. And uh, oh, okay. I have to put down that the home has been blessed and I said, I can't say ghosts. And he's like, well, I don't think we should use ghosts on a disclosure. So yeah, um, I've dealt with that. I've dealt with um, I, my, probably my other craziest thing was when I had to go to jail to get listing documents signed because the trustee was in um, women's county lockup. So, but I, you know, honestly, all my stories are boring. I mean, the, the trip to the jail is just a field trip. I'm so <laughs> this ghost story. So if the attorney said it's blessed, Well, what does that mean to a buyer who's atheist or agnostic or of a religion that doesn't do blessings? I mean, the people who sage houses definitely come from California. Well, I, well, I agree with that, but this was also probably, gosh, probably 12 years ago. Um, And it was the only way that him and I could think of to do a proper disclosure, to allow the buyer the opportunity to ask questions like if they really were concerned, they would say, why did she have the home blessed? And then of course I would have to answer with, she thinks she has ghosts in her home, but to just put down the seller thinks there's ghosts in her home and that her home's haunted. I didn't really know how to say that. So we decided that the home was blessed. So full disclosure, friends in North Carolina, our disclosure document is this big, California is this big, and we don't make you talk about your ghosts. They are not a material... With all of that being said, what is the best way for somebody to find you if they are looking for your coaching, instructing, selling, brokering, all the different versions? All the things, all the things, all the, yeah, there is a lot of versions of Barb, literally. Um, So Instagram is my jam at Barb Betts. Very simple. Just my name. My website is barbbetts.com for all my speaking and training. And then of course I would be remiss. I do service the Southern California area. I do still houses, do still sell houses every day with my husband. And um, we're always here if you need anything in the Southern California area. So do you own Barbara Betts too, just in case? I do. I do still own Barbara Betts. Early in my career, that was my domain. I think if you didn't, Phil Hawkins would be parking on it and charging you for it. He would be. He would be. so much for- Thank you, beautiful. Time with me on the podcast, but I know our listeners have enjoyed this and they really appreciate all of your different levels of expertise as I do. So I hope you inspired somebody to go get more- focused in their social game and that they're thinking about real estate in a dip, deeper and broader way as well. So thank you for being I here. love it. You are very welcome, my dear. Thank you for everything you do for the industry. You are a shining star. Friends, you know what to do now. Say something nice about Barb in the comments. And in fact, if you want to make fun of Harold, we, we appreciate it. <laughs> you go right ahead. Loves hearing Harold Betts. That's his pride and joy. Click like, click subscribe. Yeah. And most importantly, circle back with us because you never know what we'll have on crazy shit. So if you found value in this episode, please like and subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell and catch another amazing episode by clicking above. Crazy Shit in Real Estate is also available on all of your normal podcast apps. So if that's where you like to hang out, go find me, click subscribe. And most importantly, leave me a review that says you think I'm awesome. My guests are awesome. Or this content is just exactly what you were looking for. And then by the way, if there's something you need, you want to learn about something, you can comment below anytime. You can also send me a direct message if you need to remain anonymous, no judgment. But anyway, I'll only judge if you forget to subscribe and click. I'll see you next time.